We've all heard about the great Pacific garbage patch. Is it what we think it is? So the great Pacific garbage patch really is a misnomer. It's not a patch. It's not a mass. It's nothing you can see from space. All these things one's heard. But in fact, it's just a giant soup, a gyre, a, a whirlpool of plastic in the ocean at various depths. So it's not as if you can stand on this garbage patch. It's not, it's not an island of garbage. Just to the north of these islands lies a convergence zone of currents that cause plastics to accumulate in that area. When I went through it on my own sailboat, I saw lots of things floating in the water. A large derelict fishing net, a ghost net, or I might see a bottle or a crate. And then also you have stuff like uh, sticks and wood also collecting in this, in this garbage patch. Even if the debris isn't a floating mat of trash, even if it's more dispersed than that, it could still hold an enormous amount of plastic. Even if you're in the middle of the garbage patch, you often can't see the plastic because it's below the surface. But that's not all of it. It's only part of what's, what's in the garbage patch. Mm. They're very small fragments of what were bigger pieces of plastic. Plastics that are in the ocean are exposed to a lot of different factors. They're exposed to ultraviolet radiation from the sun, they're exposed to wave action, they're exposed to reefs and rocks, sand, and so there are a lot of things that are contributing to these plastics breaking down into smaller pieces. You know, the plastics spread out, uh, it's under the surface. It's not an easy thing to mop up. If it were a garbage island, I think it, it, it probably would be much easier to clean up. So we're, we're wrapping up our summer series on questions that, that you submitted, the You Ask For It series. Uh, things are winding down, as my friend Tom Skilling likes to say, meteorolo meteorological summer is coming to an end. Um, and that's why he has that job and what I do. I can't say meteorological on a consistent basis. But the question this week is, is intriguing, uh, compelling. It, when when um, I said earlier, I resisted the temptation to say at my age, when I, at, when I was young, but when I was young, we called it ecology. And, and what it's called today is, is creation care. Uh, that's the new phrase. But, but the question is, is this, what would Jesus think of how we're taking care of God's creation. How, how you manage your environment matters. How you manage the space around you matters. How you manage your trash matters. Um, and it, it reaches into other areas of our lives. I, I heard about a husband and wife who got into an argument and the wife called her mother and said, he's fighting with me again, so I'm going to come live with you. And, and her mother said, no, honey, I don't think that's a good idea. He needs to pay for his mistake. So, so I'm going to come live with you. So, Managing our home environment matters just as much as managing our, our Earth's environment. So let me, let me preface this uh, with this thought. Anytime the question is, is not, not so much what would Jesus do, but what would Jesus say about something, some contemporary problem, something that, that he, we don't know if he even thought of this. The, the response is, is going to be subjective, but I'll do the best I, I can. Jesus didn't say anything directly about this topic. He never used the word ecology. He didn't use the, the term creation care, uh, but that, that doesn't mean that he didn't care about it. In other words, when you throw down that piece of paper and somebody says, hey, pick that up because Jesus wants you to pick that up, the response is say, well, Jesus never said I couldn't. That's, that's not the response. Uh, what, what would Jesus say about this contemporary issue about creation care? 
A uh, couple weeks ago, uh, our staff took a couple days of development. Maybe you're familiar with the Global Leadership Summit. We, we watched that online, and there was a, a fascinating interview with former Secretary of State Condoleezza Rice, and she shared a story about uh, her being sworn in. The ceremony was in the Ben Franklin room of the White House, and she said as she walked in, there was a huge portrait of Ben Franklin, and, and she would be standing under that for her swearing in, and she would be sworn in by Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. And her thought was, was this. The question that went through her mind was, what would Ben Franklin think about a black woman from Birmingham, Alabama, being sworn in as Secretary of State by a Jewish female member of the Supreme Court? And her conclusive statement in, in her own mind was, was that he could not have even imagined this moment. And I wonder, then that triggered a question in my mind, could Jesus have imagined our world today? On the other hand, though, nothing surprises him. One of, one of my best friends likes to say, well, something you'll never hear from God or something you'll never hear God say is, huh, didn't see that coming. <laughs> so what would Jesus think about how we're doing today? Could he have imagined this world? I, I, big reason I, I love doing sermons based on, on your questions um, is, is because I learned something in the process. I learned from from your, your questions, and basically I'm just telling you what I learned. So thanks for that. It's kind of fun. So I was preparing for today. I, I came across this. It's called the Green Bible. Harper Bibles uh, published this, released it in October of 2008. And at, at its release, uh, the president, Mark Tauber, of Harper One said that the Green Bible was developed with the intention of being, quote, the first ever specialty Bible that takes the issues of sustainability, stewardship of the earth, what many in the religious community call creation care, very seriously, close quote. In the Green Bible, all of the passages mentioning the environment are printed in, in green. I haven't actually seen a copy, maybe, maybe you have. But in the preface, the editors of the, of the Bible ask this, these questions, is God green? Did Jesus have anything to say about the environment? What is my role as a Christian in caring for the earth? I, th I think the third question is most compelling for, for us. Now, for many of us, when it, when it comes to questions about God, questions about Jesus, this may not be the, the primary question or one of the first questions on your mind. But th the fact is, the world that we live in today, for younger people, younger people are taking these questions very seriously. The United Methodist Book of, of Resolutions has 16 pages addressing the denominational stance on creation care and the environment. And I'll sum up those 16 pages neatly for you by just saying, we're for it. <laughs> not, not to take it lightly, but we think it's a good thing. It's important. Theologically, for me, ecology or creation care addresses the intersection of God's providence and our responsibility. And when I say our responsibility, I'm not necessarily talking about people in the pews or Christians. I'm talking about all of humanity. God is sovereign. God created it. We're responsible for it. The Bible tells us that God, of course, created the world and it belongs to him, not us. Psalm 24 begins this way, the earth is the Lord's and all 
that's in it, the fullness thereof. For he has founded it on the seas and established it on the rivers. Creation care falls under our stewardship. We are stewards. Another word, the church word is trustees. If you're on trustees, you know what a trustee is. Trustees of God's creation. Which means that we should not abuse it. Which means that we should not neglect it. Creation care is an act for Christians. It's an act of discipleship. Because even though Jesus may not have used these exact words, it's obvious that he cares deeply for all of God's creation. And we find in the Bible that, that God's creation, this is interesting, God's creation acknowledges and responds to Jesus. Karen shared this story this morning. Matthew, Mark, and Luke tell the same story of Jesus with his disciples on a boat on the Sea of Galilee. When a violent sudden thunderstorm, a violent storm comes up, and, and this is what happens on the Sea of Galilee, it can, it can be sunny and clear, and 10 minutes later, you're in the midst of a storm. Things happen quickly. During a fearful time, Jesus rebuked the disciples' faith and calmed the storm with a word. And the disciples were so amazed that they turned to each other and said, what sort of man is this that even the winds and the sea obey him? We know Jesus cares. Because the disciple John tells us that Jesus was present at the time of the creation. Jesus was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him, not one thing came into being. Now, although it's, it's difficult to determine what, what Jesus would, would directly say, to us today or, or give us some feedback on, on how we're doing. But what's, what's evident when we read the Bible is that Jesus cares very much, not only about human beings, not only about you and I, but what the psalmist calls, I love this term, the fullness thereof. All of God's creation and the fullness thereof. Everything we can see, everything we can touch, everything we can experience is a gift from God. And so if it's important to Jesus, it makes sense that it should be important to his followers. It, it's our stewardship. Why? Well, we, we, we've touched on the first reason that God made and loves the world, and so we should too. When you read the creation account in Genesis, every day of creation ended with, with God declaring that what he had created was good. Even before he got to the task of creating humans. At the end of the day, he looked at what he'd done, what he created, and said, this, this is good. If you want to know something that, that makes Christianity unique, think, think about this. Not every religion considers matter as, as mattering. What, what I mean is, some religions belittle matter as less important than the spirit. But the Bible celebrates matter. Now, what do I mean by that? The Bible celebrates the sun and the moon and the stars and the seas. God created each of these and said what? This is good. And we, when we read the Bible, we, we find that the earth and everything in it is so important to God that his, his commandments include the idea of caring not only for the earth, but for the animals. 
So if it's important to God, it should be important to us as, as well. When, when we care for and about God's creation, we are literally expressing our love for God. Because we are, we are loving what he loves. But, of course, God especially cares for human beings. And so, for us, caring for the planet means caring for human lives. The environment matters, the planet matters, because people matter. Caring about the environment is not just for liberals and hippies. This is the part where we love our neighbor. The environment is among a lot of different things. It's the place where we live. It's the air we breathe. It's the water we drink. The plants and animals that we eat. And even the ground that we walk on. One writer put it this way, that, that taking care of the planet is the same as taking care of other people's homes and helping to make our food and water and air safe. Now maybe, much like you have, Liz and I have had the opportunity to travel uh, to many different areas in, in the world. And, and I, th I find that one of the things that we Americans take for granted is, is clean drinking water, just the access to drinking water. A couple weeks ago at our morning Kiwanis meeting, the program was about an agricultural mission that, that's through the uh, part of the Mennonite church. But one of the presenters was a young lady from Honduras named Francisca. And she said that she was visiting the United States as part of this mission. She had, she, this was her first trip outside of Honduras, her first opportunity to be in the United States. And one of the things that she learned right away or that she had to learn was you can, you know, not, to, not to argue this, don't come back and say, well, but generally speaking, you can trust the water that comes out of the tap. She asked for a bottle of water, and he said, well, take a glass, put it under here, turn on the water, make sure it's cold, and you could drink it. That, that was, no, no pun intended, that was a foreign concept to her, because you have to be very careful about the drinking water in Honduras. Caring for the planet is perhaps the most important ways that we can care for one another. Jesus said, of course, that, that the most important commandment is, is to love God and to love your neighbor. Wendell Berry wrote, It is impossible to care for one another more or differently than we care for our earth. I remember a few years ago, I was, it's, it's providential, I think, that, that we're, we're, our mission of the month is, is uh, Sierra Leone and, and Operation Classroom and Tayama Enterprise Academy because I was part of the team back in October of 2019 that went to the dedication of Tayama Enterprise Academy. And we, you discover that there's some cultural differences. And, and one, of the, one of the things that you would notice on, on the grounds of the Enterprise Academy, it's, it's, it's for the people in, in Tayama and Sierra, Sierra Leone, but it's operated with Western ideas, which brings its own challenges. But one of, one of the things that are different about the grounds there is there are trash cans. And, and so one of the ideas that, that was passed among those going is we'll take Basically, somebody brought a big bag of dum dung suckers for, for the kids. And what we discovered is you would hand them a, a sucker and they would say, thank you, they're very nice. They'd walk away and they would, they would take the paper off and they'd throw it on the ground. And a lot of them would take that big bite and take that stick and throw it on the ground. And that drove a couple members of our team just, no, 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 don't do that. No, here, and follow me here, Jeff. I'm walking around. He said, no, no, do, do this, and, and walk over and pick up the piece of paper and do this, put it in the trash can. And, and the kids would 
smile nicely and they turn around and walk away. Because, because the cultural difference is that there's somebody employed to do that. There's somebody there, that's their job to pick up the paper and we don't want to take somebody's job away from them. So, so, so teaching them how to police the area, pick up after yourselves, that, that was, again, not, no pun intended, that was a foreign concept. Now, before you think that I'm throwing the Americans or, or throwing the Sierra Leoneans under the bus, we Americans are spoiled. We, we stayed in the guest house on the grounds of the Enterprise Academy, which was one of, I mean, a handful of homes in Tayama that had electricity, much less Wi-Fi, because that's, of course, as Americans, that's our birthright. We have to have Wi-Fi, and then there's outlets every five feet because we've got to plug in our devices and recharge them. So it's, it's, it's a team effort. Finally, this, this planet that we are responsible for is, is the world that Jesus died for. Here's what Paul wrote about, about Jesus. For in Christ, all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell. And through him, God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, my emphasis, all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of the cross. Now, the Bible makes repeated references to this fact that Jesus died for all creation. God, God so loved the world. Not, not God so loved Valparaiso or God so loved a place, but the world. And so since, since Jesus died for all of creation, we can trust that he wants his people to be concerned, not only for our little corner of the world, but but for the rest of the world. And so it begins where we are. I don't know what, Caleb, I, I don't know what my, your, your mom says, but my mom made sense. She said, clean up your room. Did your mom say that? Yeah. That, but it starts where you are. Don't leave a mess. Pick up after yourselves. Love God's world. When it comes to our own role in caring for the planet, we, we will not all react in the same way. But as Christians, I believe we are obligated to respond. And it begins, again, with, with caring for the space around us, being good stewards, being good trustees. And, and I don't, this is not a political thing, but it, it just burns me. I find it hypocritical and a waste of resources at this point for, for electronic vehicles to be mandated in 10 years when the billions of dollars that are being spent for that infrastructure could be better used to address plastic blobs in our oceans. Not only that, but this seems something that we can work cooperatively with with other nations who I think share a love for our world with us. Whether you call it ecology or creation care, it's, it's an area where those who believe in predestination, I think, fall short. This is, this is the area where God's providence intersects with our responsibility. And it is up to us to take responsibility. And so what, what would Jesus say? I don't know exactly what he would say about how we're doing but I think what I want to hear Jesus say is the same thing you want to hear Jesus say when the time comes, when we stand before him and he says, well done. 
Well done, good and faithful servant. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your spirit. We thank you today for your creation. For we know that everything you created, you considered good, and you still look upon your creation as good today. And so forgive us when we take our space and our environment for granted. Thank you for all those who, who throughout the centuries had the wisdom and your gift that you planted in them to, to bring innovation and opportunities to clean the air and make our environment more cleaner for, for us and for future generations. And so we thank you for those who are working in this area. Provide them the gifts and the graces to impact our world, to be cleaner, to be more efficient, to be the place that honors and glorifies you that you created, that is the fullness thereof. And in all ways, in everything that we do, in every way that we live, we do it to say thank you to you and to honor you and to give you glory. In the name of Christ, our Lord, we pray. And all God's people said,